Okay, now before I get into the meat and bones of this episode, some of you are curious about how is it that I can continue the Muppet Vlogs at this point. Because, as you guys may know, in every single episode of the Muppet Vlogs uh, up to this point, I would always have on the side of me a uh, DVD of The Muppet Show, like one of the seasons of The Muppet Show, rather it be uh, season one, two, or three. But the biggest obstacle now is that uh, Disney did not make any more after that. There is no Muppet Show Season 4 or Muppet Show Season 5 DVD. So that would seem like I'm a bit in an obstacle per se. Like, I can't really move forward with the Muppet Vlogs, right? Like, I'm pretty much stuck in a hurdle. Well, fear not, guys. Because I mentioned at the end of either one of the end uh, episodes of like season three of the Muppet Show on the, on the Muppet Vlogs that I actually do have my ways when it comes to uh, continuing the Muppet Vlogs on schedule with no interruptions whatsoever. And here's the thing. Now, back when I was a kid, probably more than a decade ago, I remember there was this channel called CTS. And... I, I never really checked the channel. I don't know what's up with it. Like, I don't know what kind of programmings they were showing. But I remember back then, they were actually showing all the episodes of whatever would contain The Muppets. And what I mean by that, I don't mean just that they would air all the episodes of The Muppet Show. They would even go beyond that. I remember back then, like, after The Muppet Show was done, they would continue forward and they would air the episodes of the Jim Henson Hour, and even after that, they would air the episodes of Muppets Tonight. So, that basically was something that I discovered, and I would watch every single episode and made it a routine to, no matter what, when it's on the air, like, I would just go and watch it. And I remember, it was every weekday, they would always put it on at a specific time. So, I decided, I want to go and preserve those moments, and what I did is that... I picked up a new hobby, and I put them all on VHS. I recorded every single episode that they were putting on, and apply it onto this VHS. Well, not just this one. I actually have several others at the same time. So basically now, what I'm going to do with the Muppet Vlogs is that I'm going to do my research, what's the next episode, find the VHS that has the episode, watch it, and then I come back to you guys with uh, all the info I know, now that I have officially seen the Muppet, uh, like the episode of The Muppet Show on a VHS. So, the whole thing is to say, who knew that a little hobby that I have done over a decade ago would suddenly pay off into this? <laughs> Muppet Vlog, and this time we are going into the first episode of the fourth season of The Muppet Show, in which they have started off with John Denver. Now, for those of you who don't know who John Denver is, he was actually known to be a popular folk singer, but he is simultaneously a musician, a singer-songwriter, and also a producer. Uh, he is actually more known for not just with folk songs, but he also did a lot of country songs. Specifically, uh, for his passionate love for the state of Colorado, um, places that he grew up in, like in the country. And you can tell that he has a great big love for this earth. He definitely adores the environment, and let me get back to that a little later, but just to mention that... Uh, some of his biggest uh, albums, some of his biggest so songs actually include Sunshine on My Shoulders, Take Me Home Country Road, Rocky Mountain High, and Thank God I'm a Country Boy. In which uh, a few of those in which uh, the Muppets actually did sing on The Muppet Show early on. But uh, going back into the environmental aspect, that's another part of John Denver that he is actually very well known for. It's that... He is actually very recogni uh, recognizable to be a massive activist and a humanitarian to protect the environment. So this was definitely a man who has a great big passion for the place that he grew up with 
and um, pretty much the planet that he grew up with. This is a man where his location is very important to him. And so going back into the episode that he was featured in, they really want to put emphasis on that, like his love for the environment. They want to put that as the massive theme of this, of this episode, uh, both in terms of the sketches that appear and the musical numbers, and also onto the story that goes on behind the scenes. Now, the story that happens backstage is that Kermit wants to invite his friends onto his home country, or like his home town, or his home swamp. That, I think that's the best way to put it, is that he wants to invite his friends to go into the swamp to show him uh, where he came from, how he grew up, and all that kind of stuff. And a lot of people were really iffy on it, like, they, like, they were open to the idea of camping to go into the mountains and stuff like that, but the swamp, it's not necessarily the most ideal place to go camping, but they kind of have to or else Miss Piggy would vow vengeance onto them. And if anything, this is the kind of story that's a lot more about Miss Piggy than it actually is about Kermit. Um, like, in this one, we see a lot more of how Miss Piggy is trying to cooperate with going into the swamp to go camping. Because the most important thing for her is that she would be with Kermit more so than actually camping. Because she actually is kind of clueless with it. And what ends up happening is that uh, a lot of hilarious outcomes do happen where she wants to impress Kermit no matter what. And I think... One of the best outcomes that actually happened is when Miss Piggy actually did have a little bit of a chat with John Denver in order to prepare herself in order to go camping in the swamp and he would warn her about the snakes, the bugs, and the alligators and pretty much scaring the crap out of Miss Piggy. That's probably the best aspect and probably the most hilarious moment of this episode is how John Denver absolutely scared Miss Piggy to go camping and I just felt like it really was fantastic, and uh, a lot of the punchlines that do come out of it, um, like, I kind of mean that literally, well, you know Miss Piggy, like, often she would just, just chop down anything that pretty much upsets her, uh, but the punchlines in general, they're definitely great, and, you know, it makes it a lot of fun. Uh, but at the same time, like, a lot of the outdoors aspect um, like, a lot of them do fit onto the theme, like, at uh, one point, uh, like, with John Denver, especially, uh, like, the ultimate combination with the theming of environment and John Denver's music is actually, his first, uh, musical number when he came out is actually with the Garden Song, and he would sing about growing a garden, and it actually, you know, it's actually more wholesome, it's actually a very sweet number, and it's, Actually, very nice, I would say. Um, other than that, there was also another one where the Swedish chef, he would actually be cooking outdoors to make a squirrel stew. And what's actually very interesting is that you notice there is a little bit of a difference with the Swedish chef in terms of how he speaks. Is that you, got, you can actually hear a lot more uh, English onto him. It's not... Uh, like, it, it's a lot less of the hingo horse of her bird 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 and a lot more of those like, come on the squirrely, I go to shake at the tree, you know, there's a lot more English, and, um, I did find it a little bit more off-putting, or I guess the best way to put it is that it has a little bit of an uncanny valley to it, where, like, I'm understanding the Swedish chef, and it feels unnatural. I guess that's the best way to put it. <laughs> um, but yeah, other than that, there's also a musical, another musical number with Miss Piggy where she would sing Trees. And uh, she would mostly sing, reminisce this little song with a tree. And then at the end, you actually do get this like giant Muppet tree just basically pulling off tree jokes on how bad Miss Piggy sang. And... Um, yeah, I, I guess there could be some other ones that are included, but um, the rest, I would say, they don't necessarily fit in onto the environmental or the more outdoorsy kind of, uh, yeah, yeah, like the outdoorsy kind of theme. Like, some of them kind of do, but, like, you can easily misplace them and put them onto any other uh, episode. Uh, like, one example... 
like uh, like the closing number is actually another song that John Denver does sing is uh, Grandma's Featherbed, and that's where his side as a folk singer definitely pops out. Where you do get a bit of that cheesiness from folk songs, but you also have like the really upbeat and fun kind of song, and you see like the visual representation of like a, gra a, gi a grandma's giant feather bed with all the different Muppet kids that are in there and also a lot of the other Muppet dogs uh, as well. But one thing that I do find that is actually pretty cute is that there's actually a very small appearance of the grandma from the song and it's actually John Denver who comes out dressed up as a grandma and I thought uh, that was a lot that was actually really cute and uh, really sweet. Now let me just take a little bit of a moment to discuss about the fact that since it is season four and it is like the like this is pretty much the premiere of it uh, are there any significant difference between uh, like the previous seasons and this one well I can pretty much tell you the way that they introduced it I can notice some subtle changes like well, okay some small ones but some that are a little bit more obvious for one they actually did shorten up the intro like, uh, the big one is that, you, you know, like, when you see the Muppets, like, coming in, it's time to play the music, it's time to land the land, like, that little aspect? Like, I, well, like, in the previous seasons, you would actually see that there are the girl Muppets who would have their little moment, and then the guy Muppets. In season two, they actually decided to shorten that bit and make it into one little section, where the girl Muppets are going to be on the bottom, like, coming out of, uh, well, actually, hold on. Yeah, coming out of this side, and then the guy Muppets would actually come out from this side. Which just goes to show you that by Muppet logic, the guys prefer to be on top. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, the other changes that I do notice actually is that, um, they're, like in terms of the humor actually, even though that I did mention that uh, throughout this episode, it's a lot more wholesome, it's sweet, it can be a little cheesy, but it's a lot more upbeat. The humor, I must say, is a lot more darker, well not a lot more darker, but subtly darker than in the previous episodes. And I think the greatest example of that is probably with the Happy Wanderer. Oh my god, like the steps that they took in there, no pun intended, they're pretty much like, wow, like I would not really expect that coming from the Muppets, honestly. Because the thing is, is that with the Happy Wanderer, it's a setting like where you actually got some mountain climbers. And they would pretty much sing the song regularly, going Valerie, Valera, Valera. And then suddenly the last bit, every time they go into that chorus and go into that last Valera, there's always that one mountain climber that just falls off. And that's basically the whole joke of that sketch, is that every time they would go into that last Valera, like, one of the mountain climbers falls off. <laughs> and that's pretty dark, I must say. And actually, there is another dark moment where, um, it's actually the opening number. The first musical number that they go into is Why Can't We Be Friends, where the whole setting is more of a battleground everybody is pretty much at war with each other and considering how things are going today it still kind of resonates to uh what's happening today and that's kind of weird i must say uh but um yeah basically the whole thing is that everybody is at war with each other and then they sing why can't we be friends and you see all the muppets from around the world are pretty much united but then suddenly, Statler and Waldorf step in, and they have this huge uh, turret gun and just shooting everybody. Uh, like, like nobody actually got shot, but still, it's like you just sh you just see them right out of nowhere, just shooting at all the actors in there. It's like, holy crap! That like, uh, yeah, like j this is pretty much all to say that. Yeah, like, in terms of the, the humor, you can tell that there is a bit of a darker tone onto it, that uh, they decided to step in a new level with the humor in terms of The Muppet Show. So, I would say that overall, uh, this is actually a pretty interesting, uh, op like, a pretty interesting starter for a new season of The Muppet Show. And you could tell that there are a few significant changes, but the core elements of The Muppets are still there that do make it good. And what I actually really do appreciate, at least in this episode, is that there is this 
uh, large theme. Like, they did experiment with that a little bit onto Season 3, but they really do uh, decide to go into it pretty well with the whole theme of going uh, camping and all that stuff. Oh, and actually, there is one more little tidbit that I forgot to mention is that um, what is interesting is that with this whole episode of Kermit wanting to go camping with the other Muppets and having John Denver there is that coincidentally enough, like if you fast forward a little bit onto 1983, there is actually a TV special called Ro Rocky Mountain Holiday in which John Denver was actually the guest star in there. So yeah, they I, so overall the Muppets actually do end up going camping with John Denver. But anyways, going back to what I was saying, uh, I really do appreciate that it really does, uh, it really does stuck to the theme of what it wants to do, which in this case is camping, and, uh, like, even in the sketches and in the musical numbers, like, you can see, uh, the theme, like, they would go into different elements of the environment, outdoors, plants, trees, and all that kind of stuff, so... You know, it really does work within not just the theming, but also, um, like, what applies to who the guest star is. And even the guest star, I must say, that, you know, he is pretty well presented onto this. And even in terms of the humor, like, it could pretty much range from, uh, like, it could be sweet and wholesome to just kind of, like, just a little step darker than what... Muppet fans are probably used to but overall I would say that this is definitely a very solid episode and a really good starter to a new season but anyways that is pretty much it for this episode so I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see with all the things that I have said so far if this is going to continue with the rest of the episodes but uh, we will only know until next time so see you later dudes